Hi, this is Brock Yorty, Ask Brock, live from Kalamazoo, Michigan, my home. Wow, has it been a couple crazy weeks with this COVID-19 virus. You know, you think about it, the first cases popped up in Washington late January to where we are now. If you're following the Johns Hopkins University COVID map, you can see a week ago we were at 182,000 confirmed cases worldwide. Now we're at 352,000 plus cases worldwide. And as we watch this video, maybe a few weeks from now, we could be even farther off. So how do we operate in our industry, which is essential vital work in these abnormal operating conditions? We do it by making sure our people are trained, they have the right tools, that we take care of our people first, and then our neighbors, our community, our customers. But our people have to feel safe. They have to know that things are going to be okay and that they're going to be able to operate and keep their families safe. So we do that by checking the CDC website, getting the latest information, making sure that we're being clean, having good sanitary conditions, you know, uh, using hand sanitizer, using latex gloves and N95 masks when necessary, qualifying the work we're going out to do to make sure our customers aren't infected, you know, asking the right questions where they've traveled from, if they have a fever, if they have a cough, you know, qualifying the right questions to make sure our people are safe and then to make sure that our customers are safe. You know, checking with our local health departments, you know, the National Groundwater Association came out with a COVID-19 procedure with the swift work of Jeff Williams and David Enrich. You know, those guys came together and said, we need a good policy for our people because we want to keep our people safe so we can keep operating. The Department of Homeland Security has deemed us, you know, critical essential work because water is life. Water is going to help us keep sanitary conditions. We got to continue. But in order to do that, we have to be safe. And in order to be safe, we got to be smart, smart groundwater professionals not dumb roughnecks. You know, I've seen on social media, people say, oh, stop being sissies, it's just a cold. It's not about you, it's about the immune impaired. It's about the elderly. It's about people that uh, have other respiratory issues in the first place. This is with the where this virus is going. So we gotta have good social distancing. We gotta make sure we're mitigating our risk. We can't just, uh, throw these safety guidelines to the side of the rig like we do on other situations. We got to be good, smart groundwater professionals. And in order to do that, that means we got to keep our people up to speed. Look at the areas, check with your local health departments, see where the area threat. If there's a large spread, you know, you have to question, is this an area that I can get into and I can keep my people safe? And then if our people are feeling ill, you know, we have to be able to take care of them. They have to know that they can take a couple days off, that they can self quarantine, that they can go get tested because it's more important for us to flatten this curve and not overwhelm our healthcare systems. Look at the first world countries like Italy and France and how bad this has impacted them. Look at how widespread this is in China. We have the responsibility right now to continue to keep our water infrastructure moving keep our people safe, keep our communities safe, and do the right thing. And we do that by being well-informed. National Driller's gonna have an e-blast come out. National Groundwater has their COVID discussion group. They've put out several good pieces of information. Thank you. And then it's about us staying safe, being smart, being the groundwater professionals that we wanna represent our industry and community and continue to work. Be safe, thank you.